So I've been planning on doing a video about the Big Bang for a while. How do we know the Big Bang happened? What evidence is there for it? Last video, I discussed what a scientific theory is, and why it isn't the same as a colloquial theory. So I'm assuming we're all coming into this with the understanding that scientific theories are well-established, descriptive frameworks. If you guys haven't seen that, you should go check it out. Click the card in the corner to watch it. Okay, let's get into it. So let's start off by talking about what the Big Bang is. Then we'll move to the evidence we have that it happened. The Big Bang is the rapid expansion of matter from the state of extremely high density and temperature that, according to current cosmological theories, marked the origin of the universe. Apparently, the astronomer Fred Hoyle came up with the term Big Bang when he said this on a radio broadcast. These theories were based on the hypothesis that all the matter in the universe was created in one Big Bang at a particular time in the remote past. Supposedly, Hoyle believed in the steady state, non-Big Bang model, but he actually specifically denied that claim and said it was just a striking image he used to highlight the differences between the two models. So we have this whole model, and we can push the model forward if we can prove various different things about it. We start at the beginning and work our way through. So for example, in the case of a murder, we can establish that somebody died by finding a dead body with a bullet hole in it. This isn't proof of a murder yet exactly. Now let's say that we find a pattern with a number of other murders across the city. They were all shot in the same way, with the same gun at the same time of day. We know it was the same time based on how stiff the bodies are when they were discovered. This is a line of evidence. We know it was the same gun based on the bore pattern and the shell casings. More lines of evidence. At this point, we don't need every single line of evidence to prove that it was a gun. We've already established that. It's the same with the Big Bang. There are a number of lines of evidence, some of which take us back to 380,000 years after it happened. At that point, the Big Bang is established as a fact. That's what happened. We don't need more than that to prove it. But there are other lines of evidence, like primordial nucleosynthesis, which take us back to T equals zero which is the nanosecond that it happened we can be even more accurate about time frames. So let me cover the evidence that proves it first, the supposed dead body in the room. So we've all heard a train or a car horn or something moving by us and noticed the Doppler effect, right? Where the sound gets higher pitched as it gets closer and then lower pitched as it moves further away. Well, the same thing works with light. The wavelengths of light get stretched when they move away from us and contracted when they get closer. That means the light we see shifts to be a different color. When something's moving toward us, it has a blue tint, and when it's moving away from us, it turns red. We use that all the time to discover new planets around different stars. We watch the star to see its wobble because planets don't actually orbit stars. Stars and planets orbit each other. They both orbit the same point in space, which is proportional to their mass. So the point that the Earth and the Sun orbit isn't in the center of the Sun. It's still inside the corona, but it causes the Sun to wobble a little bit, which, from a distance, would produce a shifting pattern of light coming from it. Red, blue, red, blue. And based on how intense the shift is, and how big the star is, we can tell how massive the planet is. So we use the Doppler effect with light all the time in space. Based on how red shifted its light is, we can calculate the speed at which it's moving away from us. Then we can use the cosmic distance ladder. The cosmic distance ladder is a method of determining how far away something is based on brightness. So when a star explodes, they always have the same level of brightness, or damn close enough to call it. If we see a supernova roughly four light years away, we know it's gonna be roughly the same brightness as a supernova explosion 400 light years away. Then we can compare that against how bright it looks to us and figure out roughly how far away it is. So if we compare the speed at which the object is moving away from us based on its redshift to its current distance based on the cosmic distance calculator, we get a relationship called Hubble's Law. It looks like this. Don't be intimidated by the weird variables. The V means the speed that the object is moving away from us, or the recessional velocity. The D is the co-moving distance to the object, and the H is Hubble's constant, which is a value calculated by the WMAP probe to be about 70.4 kilometers per second. Now here's the crux of the argument. If we use general relativity to turn the clock back, we see that everything was once much closer together than it is now. But another line of evidence, called the cosmic microwave background radiation, will give us a picture of what the universe looked like 380,000 years after it happened. Another line of evidence, called primordial nucleosynthesis, gets us all the way back to t equals zero, the moment it happened. The reason we want to get to t equals zero is because by looking at the conditions at that moment, we can alter the theory to fit the facts. And that's 
what we've done. The Big Bang Theory has been modified a few times over the years to be as accurate as possible. That being said, any scientist of sound mind wouldn't accept anything on blind faith. So if something changes to make me doubt the validity of anything in science, I will change my views. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. Follow me on social media and join my Discord. I talk to fans in voice chat on Thursday and Sunday nights at 9pm Eastern. So don't miss that. I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching, guys.